Hello and welcome to our presentation DC in Context, Connecting the Curriculum to the City. My name is Stephanie Travis. I am the program head for the Interior Architecture Program at the George Washington University and my colleague Katherine Anderson will be joining me in a few slides to share more about our presentation. We are the authors of 25 Concepts in Modern Architecture, a guide for visual thinkers, which was released last year um, by Bloomsbury Publishing. Every architecture or design program has a story or identity. Since the study of architecture and interiors is often driven by context, we feel that this story, who a program or what a program's philosophy is, can really be defined by where they're located. Um, and this is further enforced by the famous David Ajay, who says context is so important not to mimic, but to become part of the place. For faculty teaching in the IA program within the Corcoran at GW, it is really critical for us to focus on context and connect the city with the curriculum. Since the study of architecture and interiors is often driven by context, and concepts are often derived from global and cross-cultural perspectives, and designs are so linked to their site, from the macro to the micro, country to city to neighborhood, we felt that it had to be a really integral part of our philosophy. The basic act of architecture is to understand the vocation of the place. In this way, we become ourselves part of a comprehensive totality. To belong to a place means to have an existential foothold in a concrete, everyday sense. So unlike other disciplines, architecture and interior design is physical and tied to a place. And projects that connect to the context often have more depth and breadth than those that lack any connection to the site. So our significant physical location, which is in the nation's capital, Washington, DC, across from the White House, gives our program a really distinct character in which to expand our pedagogy. This is a, uh, a view of the campus sort of towards the upper left hand and you can see in red that is our building, the Corcoran Building, and it is across from the White House, and you can see it's very close to the National Monument and the National Mall and the Capitol. And so this is a very unique site with so many cultural institutions and national attractions that we really felt um, that this needed to be a part of our program in a much larger way than just being in D.C., It's a very unique city in that it is the capital. It also has a smaller scale due to the height restrictions. And so you have sort of this cultural mecca, but you also have a very easy living and sort of moving around um, experience there. This is our campus, the GW Foggy Bottom Campus, which is in the heart of the city, although defined by 20 blocks. Um, so the campus has a real campus feel, but yet it is in the middle of, you know, one of these, um, one of the greatest cities. So students really have the opportunity to explore and engage. And that's really what we've tried to do is to expand our pedagogy in ways that our projects take advantage of these dynamic sites. We have a modern reuse of a significant building, which we're located in. Our students do projects that connect to the local nonprofit organizations and study uh, many modern and contemporary buildings. And we also collaborate with leading DC firms. And we're going to share our method for integrating the city into an integrated sequential curriculum. So some more um, iconic photographs. And this is the building. We are in a um, historic Beaux-Arts building that was once a, um, a museum. And since we are part of a adaptive reuse project, we really like to um, encourage our students to do the same sort of projects. 
This was designed by Ernest Flagg and it actually opened in 1897. The visionary behind this was William Wilson Corcoran, who was a Washington, D.C. based merchant and banker whose own collection was housed in this museum and created one of the first prominent publicly accessible art collections in the nation's capital. It also housed an art school in the lower levels, but it um, joined with GW in 2015 and became part of um, the Corcoran School of the Arts and Design. What's incredible about this building is, besides the beauty of the building, is the location being, as I mentioned, right across from the White House, and you can see the National Monument and many other incredible um, iconic buildings and landmarks. The interior of the building is just as impressive. You have this incredible atrium with these columns, and this allows for a very interactive and very um, universal space where we can have exhibits and performances and events. The staircases are incredibly beautiful and they lead up to the second floor where our program is housed. This is um, the rotunda, which is a beautiful space for exhibits. We actually had our um, one of our capstone exhibits in this rotunda. As you can see, each student had a board which summarized their project and a model, and we had the projects um, in, along the perimeter of this space. Because it's an adaptive project, we have studio spaces that are actually located in the old um, art gallery. So because, again, we have this incredible adaptive reuse project for our home, we like to um, incorporate that philosophy into our projects. Hi, I'm Katherine Anderson, co-author and presenter along with Stephanie Travis. I'll be guiding you through the next few slides. We included this quote because we're always emphasizing to students that there's a component or facet of this discipline that's associated with place. We, of course, don't work in a vacuum and the context or site can really deeply impact the way you might approach the design. And it can also be the catalyst for providing a concept. Um, at the very least, we feel that consideration of the place will inform how the project will not only connect to its surroundings, but to how people or visitors will literally approach the building. In Studio One, students are given a simple project, and that's to design a, a pavilion within the National Mall with several important landmarks. The Lincoln Memorial to the west, the Vietnam Memorial to the north, and Washington Monument to the east. So they begin by familiarizing themselves with the landscape. Part of the assignment is to go and to sketch, walk around the site at different times of the day to take it in, and to document what's going on. Most aren't familiar with this area, so getting to know what's in DC and the monuments, this is somewhat encouraged. Um, and even some of them, if they've been living in the Washington DC area, this might be their, actually their first time visiting the site. It's easy to think about projects in the abstract, but there's definitely a feeling you get when you connect the site with the design project. And we hope that the, sen the sensations or thoughts that students might feel once they're there is actually carried or brought from the site and really ultimately somehow captured in the project. So you see lots of different images of where students are looking around and trying to really capture the essence of the site. we have a student who was influenced by the beauty of the cherry blossoms and it's hard not to be influenced by them. Um, she took an image and put it in her slide here. These are the things that really give shape to an identity of a place and we're, these are the kinds of things that we want students to take notice of. When students go to the site and actually observe these moments happening, such as the light reflecting on the water and shade that the tree provides. Again, these are things that we can talk about with students, but when students actually go and notice and observe these things, 
these are the kinds of lessons that we see really stay with them long after the project is over. You can see with this example, we ask students to really think about why they selected the site. Um, what specifically is important about where their project is located. And so you can see that now we are not just asking them to pick any place, but tell us the reason why this location is important to them and more specifically to their project. With the capstone projects done in Studio 5, we strongly encourage students to select a site really anywhere within the DC metro area, and most do select somewhere within the city. So for this project, the student investigated the waterfront around the Georgetown neighborhood where the city meets the Potomac River. In this instance, the, students, the student did a lot of research and became acutely aware of the indigenous people who occupied this land previously, so hence the name of the project, the Anacostine Boathouse. This kind of sensitivity and awareness could only occur when students really think about the land and what history came before us. And so peeling back those layers and imagining the landscape and the place, this is really the reason why we continue to connect the curriculum with the city. We really wanna be able to foster and develop this kind of awareness with our students. So continuing with this project, the student was using the project to really connect to other DC landmarks and this awareness of the surrounding provides a thinking of broader issues and to see the context as more than just what's in front of them. For this project, we have the beautiful park, which is Rock Creek Park, which really runs through the heart of Washington, D.C. And here we see another example of how historic structures, as well as leveraging the beauty of these green spaces, could be seen as a possible restaurant in this project. For this student's project, knowing the concentration of music and the rich culture in this particular neighborhood of D.C. really enabled her to use what's already there to reinforce the concept of of her project, which was a place for concerts and acted as a live music venue. We'll see in this capstone, which is a boutique hotel, we'll see that the idea of the cherry blossoms plays a key role in her concept development. And so you can see at the top, the progression or the stages that the cherry blossom develops was really the basis of her idea. And so again, we have an idea or an example that place really can influence the way that students not only approach their designs, but also their concept development as well. We wanted to include this slide to know that architecture or a part of our built environment is that connective tissue that brings us physically together, but also makes those things that are sometimes intangible, those structures of society, actually visible. So that's why we always encourage our students to do pro bono work as a way of showing that good design can and should be accessible to all. This is really what brings us all together. And we feel that our design efforts should really be put to the use of others as well. For this project, students were asked to rethink the area of the National Building Museums, classrooms, and some other spaces. And the National Building Museum is one of those iconic spaces in Washington, D.C. that's really utilized not only for museum spaces, but also programs and activities for the community. For this project, students worked with the National Institutes of Health, um, their children's in again, envisioning the redesign of some of those spaces there. Students worked in various teams and you can see that the concepts of biophilic design were a driving force in this project. 
And when you look at the projects, they're really alive and quite colorful and also very imaginative. So we feel that students able to work on quote unquote real life projects really invigorates their work and really gets them very excited about working in a team. With our location in DC, which provides obviously this very distinct character in which to expand our pedagogy, one of the ways um, we really incorporate our location is getting out into the city. And so we do a lot of field trips and events that really create an extension of the classroom. This is the Washington Design Center, which is a showrooms um, from many different designers and product manufacturers. And it's a great way for students to see um, products and ideas and um, textiles, um, you know, in real life. We have many of the leading showrooms, Steelcase, also Knoll, Herman Miller, again, getting the students to the showrooms to see the, the, the physical elements of their products is something that is really important as we live in a very digital world. The ASID, the American Society of Interior Designers, their headquarters are located in Washington, D.C. This is an incredible asset um, to our program because many of our students are ASID members and um, visiting the, uh, the headquarters has been um, really valuable. It's incredible modern and contemporary architecture as well as classical architecture in Washington. The Krieger Museum is a place where we take our students every semester. We have faculty, well, I actually did some research on this building and so we have a really nice relationship with um, a lot of the modern um, buildings on campus and around campus. Um, and so bringing our students here to feel, see, experience these incredible spaces is um, again, uh, just part of the extended classroom. Uh, when I had a lecture on Maya Lin and the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, and then was able to walk 10 minutes to actually experience and walk through it, um, that was a really only a GW moment, um, and I think whatever type of um, art piece or sculptural identity or interior that's in important um, is an incredible way to tie it in with the uh, curriculum. And we do the same thing at the National, National Gallery of Art, the East Building, which is designed by IMP, and um, both have been really incredible um, field trips, um, spaces for critical analysis. Um, students have written papers, done diagramming, taken photographs, have really gotten to experience these incredible spaces firsthand. So I think, you know, utilizing the architecture, the interiors, um, the retail, the restaurant design, everything that is, you know, in and around campus has really added a depth to our program. Our first Friday program consists of matching a student with a professional working in the Washington DC area. And it's really a time for our students to ask the professionals just about anything. It might be about their particular project that they're working on, or it might be questions about their portfolio. So this moment really allows firms to get to know our students. And in turn, our students get a sampling of the many different firms that are in Washington, D.C. And so we use the city as an extension of the classroom while also raising the awareness of our program among the professionals. So this is definitely a win-win situation for us. These following slides show an example of the firms that partner with us for First Fridays. And you can see the kind of work that they do and the location of the firm in relation to where our program is located in Washington, D.C. Another program that we have is called the alum program. And this brings those who 
graduated uh, to talk to the students about what's out there, how they got their jobs, and this also allows our students, our current students, to ask questions about that process. So it makes the idea of getting a job, I think, much less daunting, while the alumni who maybe have just recently graduated, they're sympathetic to those who are still in school, it gives them a platform to engage with their alma mater and also showcase the work that they're doing. So it's also really rewarding for the faculty to see where the students are and what kind of projects they're working on. We want to end the presentation with this thought that by connecting each aspect of the program, pedagogy, research, even our own identity, back to the city of Washington, D.C., the faculty and students are engaged, which then energizes the Interior Architecture Program, the Corcoran School of Arts and Design that we're a part of, as well as GW University and the D.C. community, so really, we could only exist in this unique context because of the way that we engage in our city. Thank you so much for listening to our presentations.